Well, back to school time is here, and it is an important time for your church to reach more families. In this episode, we give you 11 ideas that your church will love. We hope this conversation helps you reach more people and grow. This is the Reach Right Podcast. Well, hey guys, welcome to the Reach Right Podcast, episode number 110. I am your host, Thomas Costello, and with me as always is my co-host... Ian Hyatt. Hey, Thomas. Hey, man. It's uh, back to school time, and that's the theme of our conversation today. My kids are already back at school. Get this. Hawaii kids go back to school on August 2nd. That's the okay. day we go I'm, back here. So I'm jealous. I'm, I'm I know. jealous. Me too. It's like, yes, back to school. Let's do it. <laughs> we're, uh, we were stoked about it. So, uh, But this is a big time for churches, as you and I know. This is uh, yeah. one of the times that people do tend to be looking for churches and some of the larger attendance weeks um, are kind of leading into that, especially in that post Labor Day time, that first few weeks of September. uh, There's always been like that campaign for the national back to church Sunday and all those things there. So I think it's an important time that uh, churches kind of take a look at some of the things that they can be doing to reach families, especially, but reach more people in their community. Uh, And this is a great time to launch into that. Uh, So exactly. Agreed. Yeah. You know, people get kind of a normal schedule back. As we know, attendance typically fluctuates over the summer. There's vacations mm-hmm. and all sorts of other things going on. And and, uh, and people are getting back in sync and, uh, and, you know, thinking more about getting their schedule and church back. Not like church, I shouldn't say back into the equation, but maybe full time back into the equation. Yeah. So we yeah. know how it is. I mean, vacations yeah. and, you know, we're, we still have uh, I don't know. We're hearing all the time people going down with COVID and all that stuff. And oh, God willing, as school gets back in, that it'll be kind of a, a, a waning in that. Uh, but yeah. I, I think that there, everybody is looking for some normalcy. You know, that, there's yeah. a reason why I did those fist pumps. It's like, yes, yeah. bring back routine, bring back yeah. schedule. And I think people in general want that. And I think church uh, is a part of that for many families out there. Is they want to yeah. have that routine of Sundays and uh, youth yeah. ministry happening at normal intervals and yep. all those things happen there. So today we have 11 different ideas that churches can run with to take advantage and kind of engage families specifically in this back to school season. I think your churches are, if you apply one of these, I think it would actually go a pretty long way, but there's many ideas here. So take as many yep. as you want, run with them. I think yep. it's going to be a really good conversation for us today. So yeah, we uh, the so. first one is host a family worship service. So in this back to school season, kind of leading up to that, whether it's before Labor Day or after Labor Day, I would say even for churches that are, are that are in areas that have school that starts earlier, like ours here in August, yeah. uh, I think you probably want to target that right after Labor Day time, that week after Labor Day specifically is a great time to do a lot of this here. Yeah. But hosting a family-oriented worship service, I think that really goes a long way. Even if your church, you know, you have uh, youth ministries or kids ministries that happen, what if for just one Sunday, yeah. you actually took some time to focus on families, maybe have all families together. I'm sure your children's ministry volunteers would love having a week to, yeah. to maybe take a week off from being in there, yeah. but uh, be able to to do that and uh, highlight uh, some of the things that are happening in kids ministry, yeah. that kind of stuff there. I think a family Sunday is a really great idea and a great way to kick off the year. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, a lot of churches, uh, I think for good reason now in our modern uh, church era, you know, they, seg- they separate kids, students and all of that and mm-hmm. allow the parents in there. But when you all come together like that, it could produce some more momentum and excitement for those things. So that's good. Next one would be to simply highlight your student and kids ministry. So of course, uh, you know, back to school, getting back into the swing of things. Sometimes, you know, because you have a regular operating kids and student ministry. I hope most churches do at least. I hope I hope your church does, whoever's listening yep. at, uh, to us out there. It could be missed to, to obviously highlight this. Make sure you're making announcements, video promos for events to come with within these ministries. Key thing to not forget. Well, that's a good one, Ian. I'll get the next one here. I think the next uh, important thing is pray over your students and your educators at yeah. this time of year. I think that's really a valuable thing to be doing there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, here's here's kind of the the idea. I think a lot of times we we pray in general for our kids and those things, but I think this is a really 
important time to take a special time in your service to pray for. If you're the kind of church that lays hands on people, yeah. do that too. But but pray over people. I think especially educators. There are so many teachers uh, in yeah. our in our churches, uh, and I think Going it's just so important times. to yeah. to to do that. Yeah, to be able to pray over them and to uh, to pray over our students and actually take five minutes to really honor them and have them stand up and and celebrate them. And on top of that, just be praying over them. Yeah. Right? That's a good thing we, to do. We do this at my church. We, we call it a back to school blessing. Um, mm. And actually we, we have, you know, um, educators stand. We have, we have actually the students come in from each uh, grade level um, and they kind of go up there uh, different leaders within each ministry and they pray over whether or not it's high school kids, the, a middle school representative, the kids actually put on uh, kind of a special worship thing. We yeah. do it up at our church. So that, that's been our thing is our back to school blessing, but we make it a point to pray over all of the students and the teachers and people um, involved in education. Yeah. That's good. Good. Yeah. Absolutely. Give the next one, next one to be kick off a new sermon series. It's a new, it's a new uh, season. So new series is often, you know, good coming out of a summer series. And a lot of churches mm-hmm. do a summer series. We're in one right now at my church and it's a new season, right? So you're back in swing. Let's get something fresh for parents, families to focus on, uh, whether or not that is uh, like family oriented uh, you know, type of, uh, of a series or something along those lines. Um, you know, there are a lot of different ideas out there for that. Yep. Uh, I, I think it's just a good time to do that. I think that week after Labor Day is a great yep. weekend uh, to launch into a new series. Now, I've always been kind of that preach through a book of the Bible kind of a uh, yeah. church leader, and that's what, what I would do. And we would always start one that second week of September because it's a good way to just kind of ramp up and you have a, a launch pad to go with that there. A lot of people are just coming back in that time. But I yeah. love your idea of especially doing yeah. something that is is kids-focused or family-focused. Uh, I think that's really a great idea. Idea with that. So, uh, next one is have a party. Um, we're all about celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> I preached just this last weekend through the story of the lost son. The week before, I was preaching yeah. through the lost coin and the lost sheep. And one common factor in all three of those parables is throwing parties. Uh, they all throw parties, and that's something that I believe God loves to do, is to throw parties and to celebrate. And so great reason for churches to do it too, especially at back to school time. I think just do something to make it special, something that might entice someone to invite friends, family, uh, and bring them into church. But having some kind of a party with giveaways or food, just to celebrate the end of the summer, the start of yeah. something that's a, a new season and something that yeah. has, like again, more of that schedule in their lives. Lives, it is cause to celebrate. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I'll get the next one. Uh, maybe a back to school outreach. So, um, you know, may, there's a lot of, you know, schools that could use a blessing and, and a church to get outside the walls. And uh, maybe it's, uh, and not just, at, you know, at a, a church per se, but, you know, maybe it's a backpack school supply giveaway, mm. um, you know, to families in need during that time, um, you know, those types of resources. But, yeah, and I think that's a, a neat thing because you know obviously parents are focused on getting their kids back into the swing of things. If if um, folks are struggling out there financially, if your church is the one out there in in the uh, community that uh, is being a a light and providing for needs, then that's a great thing. So there's different different creative uh, things to do, but you know this is a good one to to definitely focus on. Yeah, no, love the idea. I think an outreach is really a, a great time to do it. You got to remember that there's a, there's probably kids in your community that maybe um, don't have everything they need to be successful yeah. students, and yeah. anything your church can do to help kids in that situation or families in that situation, yeah. I think it says a lot about who you are as a church there. So great idea Absolutely. with that. Uh, next one, I love this one, and something we've done at our church is adopting a school for the year. Now, I've, uh, I'm have i at a church where we meet at, um, we have met at least in the past, at a high school. Uh, so it's kind of a no-brainer which school we're going to yeah. adopt each and every <laughs> year. We adopt yeah. the same school. But there is so much power in 
being able to be a church that is connected with a school. And so kind of just having it in your mind that this is a a, a school that we have adopted. This is one that we feel responsible for. We're yeah. praying for them all the time. We're caring about the things that they care about, the needs that they have there. Um, one thing that our church does is uh, twice a year, we do like a big catered lunch for all of the teachers there at the oh, school. Nice. And it costs us something. It's not cheap to do something like that. But yeah. man, it makes a huge impact that these teachers, uh, they're getting a nice lunch and it's no yeah. cost to them. And they remember who's giving it to them and, right. and that they cared about them. So we found this to be a hugely successful opportunity is being able to adopt and kind of lay claim to being a blessing to our school that we're at, but really any school. So if you're in a, a neighborhood or a community where there are multiple schools, yeah, pray about which one it is this year. Maybe it's going to be a different school each year. Uh, yeah. But if you're like a lot of our audience, there's a school or maybe one elementary, middle and high school in your community. Right. Yeah. Just perfectly consider how you can be doing that and how you can be a blessing to them. No, that's great. And think about the relationships that can be formed there too. That came to mind, you know, just that, uh, you know, these teachers, you're there serving them, connecting with them. And, and mm-hmm. a lot of teachers have kids too, that they may want to get involved at your church and uh, so on. So good inroads can happen there. So next one would be kind of similar to the one I shared before, help, you know, supply, foster and adopted children with school supplies. This one might seem a little kind of, um, I don't know, out there a little bit, but we've seen that there's been a huge trend over the last few years of just people adopting and fostering mm-hmm. kids, which is great. Uh, there's so many unselfish families out there. I, I know so many um, just friends that have are, are in this boat and they can use help. They can, they can use, it's, it's not a, it's a rewarding thing, but it's a challenging thing for these families. So how can you come alongside and help them with school supplies? Maybe it's kids drop off and pick up. Um, you mm. know, it, most I've seen most families that adopt and foster, they have, you know, their own, not always, but they have their own kids and then they have the kid that they foster. And that's a lot of dropping off and picking up and different ages and all of that. So maybe you can yeah. help organize something like that for them. Yeah. So often foster kids and adopted kids in many cases have special needs and some of those right. uh, situations too. And so yeah. I know so many, uh, faithful followers of Jesus that uh, that do foster children and yeah. the sacrifice that they make is enormous to do something oh, like yeah. that. So yeah, anything we do to be a blessing to them at this back to school time, that's huge, I would say. So uh, next one I'll hit is that, and this is something that maybe is kind of one we don't think of, but maybe starting some kind of a homeschool meetup. I think the homeschool mm-hmm. Uh, with the pandemic and things that happened, it really shot up in its uh, in the number of people that are doing it there. So homeschool meetups, I think, can be a really good tool for a church. So uh, chances yeah. are any size church out there that you have families in your church uh, that do homeschool. And whether you're a church that promotes that and really encourages people to do it, or you're a church that doesn't, I think that there are people that are homeschooling their kids. Uh, having a meetup that kind of kicks off at this time, I know uh, homeschooling moms especially, that that is a big burden to be oh, full-time yeah. mom and everything that has to happen there and to be a teacher as well yeah. for your kids. Uh, yeah. There are a lot of things that people can get, gain by doing it together uh, yeah. and having that kind of camaraderie and relationship there. So things you, you can do some things to foster that and yeah. do something that really is a blessing to homeschooling parents. Yeah, absolutely. We found out during the pandemic when everyone was shut down and not in school that we would not be good homeschoolers just just personally. So I commend any I commend any parents that are good at it. So. We took a stab at it. We we did yeah. homeschooling uh, at the beginning of the pandemic because my uh, my he was in third grade at the time. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, his he, he had a he had Zoom classes. We had that for a whole year yeah. uh, during the beginning of the pandemic. And here, here's what was crazy: his teacher. He was actually in second grade when it started, but his third grade oh, okay. teacher. Uh, every single one, his camera was like this the entire time. <laughs> that was that. That's how it went. If you are listening only, I'm just showing the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's what he was doing. Uh, that's oh, what his man. teacher. He was a older man. I God bless him, and we love him there. But we had to pull our kids out and homeschool them uh, for a year at least. And in that uh, time, we learned that we weren't great at it as well. So oh that's gosh, not our thing. Good on on about that. Well, next one is uh, uh, launch fall youth groups. Um, you know, yep. this comes to mind for me. Uh, my I have a son who's going into sixth grade, and I have a daughter who's going into ninth grade. So two different, you know, uh, times of school. And uh, you know, I want them involved in church. You know, I'm already dreading. Oh my goodness, you know, 
the things my son's going to hear and see. And they're in public schools here. And, uh, and so, you know, my daughter's going into high school. You know that you have a high school age daughter. So I'm like, we want them close to the Lord. So, yep. and I, I say that it's good to do it anyway, because not just for the spiritual needs of kids, but it's a natural time to do it. You know, they're out of summer, they're back into their routine. Mm-hmm. So now you can actually get groups going. It's funny, my daughter, who's going into ninth grade, as I mentioned, was a part of a summer group that just, it folded and fizzled out in the summer because just all of the ups and downs and no one would come and they'd have they'd have eight, eight, you know, kids one week and then none on the next. And mm-hmm. so fall's just a little bit better time. I think our church learned about that. So I feel for yeah. everybody in our, our youth pastors in our audience, it's hard, yeah. man. You guys got a hard yeah. job there, but I think it's a great time to be really yeah. putting all of your efforts into that week after Labor Day, uh, really yeah. going all in. Kids are back in school. Routine is there and yeah. it gets better. Well, I'll just say yeah. that it gets better yeah, with that. Absolutely. So, uh, last thing is hand out family devotional kits. Uh, this is a great time to remind parents that while they have teachers at school and pastors at church, they are still the primary teachers and pastors of their own children. Uh, yeah. So anything yeah. we can do to remind them and help them and give them the tools to successfully raise great God-honoring, Christ-loving adults to turn them into that, I think that goes a long way. So absolutely, uh, giving them tools to do that. There are lots of resources out there, whether it be from Right Now Media or Orange yeah. or whatever yeah. it would be. There's lots of curriculum ideas that you can give away. Um, yeah. If you Even if you, you don't have to pay a lot of money for them, you could create your own as well. But yeah. giving parents resources, especially at this time of year when people are saying, okay, we're going to get some routine and some schedule yep. in our life. Yep. They want to kind of have the tools at that you time. You can actually set aside one day a week and it not be all like this. Yeah. So yeah, you can yeah. and, and yeah. you can this is actually when patterns are formed, right? So yeah. if we want families maybe doing devotions together or doing devotions, making that part of their lives, this is a great time to kick that off because school is starting and it's five days a week and it's the same thing every morning. And uh baking in devotions there, yeah. I think that's a great time to do it. So really doing a, a push to to give people the tools they need to be successful disciplers of their kids. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that really is important right now. Absolutely. That's good stuff. Awesome. Anything else to add as we close up? No, I think uh, hopefully these 11 things have been encouraging. And like we said at the beginning, if there's only one thing that you choose, do it well. Go all yeah. out. Uh, I think, you know, I think too, I would add um, as we are, even though, you know, we, COVID is still there and all of that, but as we are back into kind of a normal routine, I know we've experienced working with churches over the last six months, things are more normal-ish. And I think that based on that, look at this fall season, this back to school season as a time to really capitalize on that and try to get things in sync would maybe the, mm. be the word to use uh, with your ministry efforts. So... Yep, that's it. Good stuff. So hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. If it has been, let us know in the comments, rate, review, subscribe, like, do all those things. Thank you guys so much for being a part of our Reach Right family. Hope this is going to be a great school year for your students and for your church. God bless you guys and have a great week. See you.